Hi, I'm Rich, WB5YBZ, and today I'm going to be talking about a full wave loop for 80 meters. One of the ends is up in a tree. How do I protect my wire from being broken with our 50 to 60 mile an hour winds in Oklahoma? So let's go on over to the computer and let's start talking about the antenna. Thanks so much for watching. One of the things that I wanted to figure out is actually how much length do I need in a full wave loop? According to uh, John N5ID, uh, instead of the regular uh, formula, we use a 936 divided by the frequency in megahertz equals the total length. Well, I was wanting to pick this frequency, 3.5. 50 megahertz simply because if you look at the harmonics each one will put it within the bands uh, on 40 meters 20 meters and 15 meters so what I wanted to do is cut it to 263.6 feet one of the things that I thought I would need to do is get my Ballon, my feed point higher. Now I have two 24 foot poles, and so what I would thought I would do is put a ballon inside a birdhouse. I'm in a HOA, no antennas of any kind, but a birdhouse doesn't look so bad. And I'm running a real thin wire, a number 20, and then I have a real birdhouse here, and then I have a spring down here with the insulator. I had a telescopic pole and I, I drilled a one inch hole using a hole saw and it was really easy to remove some of the burrs in there, the sharp corners. I used half round files. Plus I used some sandpaper to smooth the hose. The next thing I had to do is run a fishing tape, so to speak, that an electrician uses up the pole to get the coax and start pulling it back down through the hole. I always like to tell if there's problems that happen. Well, as I was trying to pull the coax through the telescopic pole, I noticed it was binding up up at the top of it. I thought, what's wrong? So I went up there and it looked like it stripped off about eight inches of my insulation. So I had to put some heat shrink on there and heat it down or shrink it down on there. I put a ballon in this. I got the birdhouse from Ace Hardware. I sort of drilled a round hole for my pipe to come up or my telescopic pole to come up and my coax is coming in to the ballon. It's a 2.5 ballon. I drilled a hole in one side one part of the antenna in and on the other side I had to drill a hole also to put it coming in on the other side. Now one of the things I didn't show is when I shut the door the bolt sticks up above the door so I had to drill a, a small indention into the door to where the door would shut on both sides. These, this one the back side is bolted down and I also took the old board out of the and put a longer one so I can bolt it down to the pole. And then I snug up the three the, the ring to tie guy wires to it if I wanted to uh, here to just go give it a support. Just to make it look sort of like a birdhouse, you can see the hinges that I put on here. I painted a round circle. What I did is use a toilet paper roll <laughs> that was empty, of course, and just sprayed some black, flat, black paint on there. And I hope no birds will hit their heads as they're trying to come in. All right, here we go. We got our bread here. Oh, wow, you don't want that. We have our bean flip. Now, see, this isn't very, very wide. And I've tried other things. And the best thing I found out is a 7 16 bolt. And it goes really good in here to launch uh, the boat. Uh, also, I have some fishing line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fishing line. I don't think you can see it. Um, but I'm going to take this fishing line. 
shoot it over the tree in the front yard. Then I'm going to tie this, what they call, oops, that's not it. It's, I got some regular string in here. But anyway, uh, this is tar string, some sort of tar layer, uh, I think it's nylon. And we're going to tie that to the fishing string and bring it back over the tree. The tree is going to act like a pulley. I'm going to have, of course, an insulator hooked to a spring. Now, I found this spring. I want something that be flexible, easy flexible, so when the wind blows, it won't break, hopefully won't break my antenna. So this is, I got this at Home Depot and I sprayed painted it flat black simply because if it's silver it's going to show a little bit more. also painted my insulator flat black. So hopefully it won't be an eye catcher. So let's go out to the front yard and let's show you how we're going to string this between um, screwdrivers. And once we got all the length out that we need, we'll pull up all the screwdrivers and do the beam, the beam flip here. This isn't a very clear picture, but it's the tar string that I hooked to the line that you just saw I beam flipped over the tree. And I pulled this back through after I took the 7 sixteenths bolt off of it. And then I started to pull the antenna. What I did is I found a brown pulley that you would use for flagpole or rope for the pulley. I have a pulley here, just a small one, and I have this sort of going up to the edge of the chimney, which is about 18 feet high. And right up there, this is my lowest point, is my other pulley and that's where the insulator is. That goes over to a birdhouse. Let me back up here. And at the very top I just have an insulator to it. To the insulator and then from the insulator from that birdhouse I have this birdhouse and this is where the ballon is see where the wires are going in both sides I don't know if you can see the little hole that I painted on there's not a hole there and at the base of the tower, well about five foot, is where I had the lead of the coax. Right here. And then the other part of the antenna goes way up the top of the tree. And I don't think you can see it, but there's a a spring that's supposed to keep the I have a spring that keeps the tension when the winds blowing so that it doesn't pull over the poles or something but from that tree if you go on over here there's another wire that comes along and comes down toward the roof and it goes to the top of the chimney I think I came up with 263, I think I cut it for 263 feet. So you ask, how did we do on the antenna? Well, I cut about a foot off, but I probably need to add another several feet on to bring it down to 3.550 where I was wanting to. As you can see, it's really, really low here. It looks like the resonant frequency is 3.650. And you say, well, that's that's really good. Well, it is in that area, but it throws everything off in the rest of the uh, 
the band when you go to 40 meters, for an example. Uh, let's look at Rig Expert. Okay, this is Rig Expert. You can see I have a plus or minus 500 kilohertz. And of course, 500 kilohertz is uh, quite a bit for this particular band. But you can see where it drops down to about 3.650 kilohertz or megahertz. And uh, about 1.2 according to this right in this area here, which isn't bad. But again, it throws everything else off. And this is 40 meters. As you can see, even at the high end of the band, it's below 1.5. But if we had it, the resonant at 3.55, uh, I think it would be further down. And let's look at the rig expert. And you can see at the rig expert here that uh, this is 2.5 or 7.25, which the end of the band would be right here. So actually the resident for the antenna B resident really is outside the band where it's the lowest. It's le less than two point, probably 1.75, just guessing. Of course, this is a 7,300 and this is 20 meters. And as you can see, the bar graft is going further on down and again, it's really outside the band where it's resonant frequency, but through a good antenna tuner, of course, it brings everything down. Here you can see it's about 2.75, but it's, it's about here's probably the outside of the band at 350, 14,350. And you can see it's probably 2.75 uh, way out here outside the band. Again, this is outside the band where it drops down to two. And on the 7300 on 28 megahertz or 10 meters, it's actually resonant pretty close to 28930. And here's the rig expert. And you can see this is probably around 930. I have it on a thousand kilohertz now, but you can see the good thing is it looks like the highest SWR is a little bit over maybe four and it keeps on dropping down two uh, down here and just a little bit below two, maybe 1.8 and then it goes back up. But a good tuner would probably get you really down low all over the band on 10 meters. So what did we learn today? Well, we need to lengthen up the antenna so that we can get the SWR down. Am I going to do this? No, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to leave everything like it is and use an antenna tuner. Thanks so much for watching my videos, 73s.